Welcome to Electron Line and now we're going to look at case 2 in the case where we bring two components together to make a, a solution and both of the components are volatile and so therefore both components will have a vapor pressure in their own right so what happens when you bring the two together in case 2 where the intermolecular forces between the opposite components are stronger than the intermolecular forces between the components of liquid A and the components of liquid B you put them two together, now you end up with stronger forces between the molecules on average, meaning the molecules are held tighter together because of that, and so therefore you expect the vapor pressure to go down to be reduced. So in an ideal case, the total vapor pressure is simply the sum of the two vapor pressures of the individual components by themselves. So when you put them together in an ideal case, you can simply say, for example, when there is a 40% of the solution, <clears throat> is component A and on 60% of the solution is component B and you draw a straight line across right here you can then say that this represents the pressure from component A so this is the vapor pressure contributed by component A so pressure from A and then this here would be the vapor pressure due to component B and then the total pressure would simply be the sum of those two and that would be the ideal case so this would be the total vapor pressure with this kind of uh, uh, this kind of ratio of the uh, fractional uh, molar fraction of A and the molar fraction of B. But in the case where I have a non-ideal situation where the intermolecular forces are stronger between the components of A and B compared to the components between, uh, between the A alone and between the B molecules alone, then what happens is it suppresses the vapor pressure of each and what you end up then is you end up with a vapor pressure curve that looks like this depressed like that so at any given time there's actually less vapor pressure because you brought the two components together for the vapor pressure of B and the same will happen to the vapor pressure of A like that so when you put the two together you end up with a total vapor pressure that looks a lot more like this <clears throat> rather than the ideal case and so in reality then what you end up with is you end up with the pressure of A would only be this strong, the pressure of B would only be this strong, and then the sum of the two will give you the total pressure, which is this pressure right here for that case, <clears throat> rather than the total pressure like that. So you can see that there's deviations from what we call the ideal case, and we do have to account for that. And most of the time you end up with something like this, where either the vapor pressure is depressed or the vapor pressure is amplified in the case like we saw in case number one.